There's a debate raging in the Tesla analyst community on YouTube and on X. And that debate is actually, despite being very funny, very important for understanding the trajectory Tesla is on, the stock price predictions, because it refers directly to the strategy Tesla is pursuing in rolling out robotaxis, the CyberCab, the dedicated platform for autonomous driving around the world for hundreds of millions of people that will change everything we know about cars and do so very soon. And that debate has been started by Fazad. In case you don't know Fazad, of course you know Fazad. Fazad is one of the big Tesla tubers, has his own channel, <clears throat> and came up with this theory. Here's what he said, and it created a lot of discussions. And we are going into that discussion very quickly. I give you an overview, and then we draw the conclusion and understand what is really going on. And you will get my prediction that is probably the most informed prediction here, as you will see, because my reasoning is sharp and precise. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. If you agree, also let me know in the comments. Here's what Fazad said. He said, I'm 99% convinced Tesla will sell this car, the RoboTaxi, with a steering wheel and pedal. Why build a 2 plus million manufacturing capacity when regulation can be a giant bottleneck in production? Steer brake drive by wire is super easy. Install remove. It makes too much sense. Okay, so here is the RoboTaxi and the cyber cab as it was presented by Tesla. And as you can see, there is no steering wheel and no pedals because Tesla designed this beautiful thing from the ground up, as you can tell, as a complete robo taxi, as a completely AI driven car that you can get in and it drives you around and you can't steer. There is no possibility to steer because it's fully autonomous. And if you're new to Tesla and this channel, unlikely, but maybe you are, we are not just a bunch of geeks thinking about these things. This thing is scheduled for next year to go into mass production. Let that sink in. It's scheduled to go into mass production, which means next year, 2026, is the year where Tesla seems to expect to have complete, perfect autonomy, where you can order these things in your city, from your home, in America at least, for less than $1 per mile. That means you click on a button, you want to go three miles, the robo taxi comes, you pay $2.90, and it gives you a personal ride as a robot to your three mile destination. That is the future. That is already a reality in Austin, Texas, and in San Francisco, but not with these beautiful robo taxis and cyber cabs, but with conventional Teslas, which are also awesome, but not as awesome as this thing. Fazad has the following argument. I summarize this. He says, I know where he's coming from, but he's wrong, very likely. But Fazad says, look, if you start mass producing the cyber cap, which Tesla has now confirmed they are, and Elon schedules the launch for Q2 2026, that is only six months away. That is crazy. So it's in the middle of ramping up. There are thousands of people walking on this billions of dollars spent in Texas, Austin. Fazad argues if this happens, <clears throat> Or well, since it happens, <clears throat> Tesla is very likely to build in a steering wheel. But here's Fazard's argument, and that's where he's very likely wrong. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. Fazard's argument is Tesla cannot know if it number one solves autonomy by then. What if they ramp it all up? They are ready in May or June or whatever next year in six, seven months, but FSD is not ready. And Fazard's even stronger argument is even if FSD is ready, what if the regulation is not ready? What if the government says, no, you can't just deploy robot axes. And therefore Fazard argues, you cannot take that much of a capital expenditure risk and build this giant thing without a plan B. And what is the plan B? Take this beautiful car, put a driver, you know, paddle in a wheel on it and sell it to consumers and then everyone is going to buy it because everyone in Fazard's theory wants this car to own and drive, drive yourself, that car. Okay. And that triggered a whole storm of discussions on X with a lot of people saying, bring very good arguments that made me think. And they brought arguments against Fazard. And they said, Fazard, listen, this car is designed as a robo taxi. It has all kinds of specific specs. It is too slow for self, for, for being driven by a human. It's not designed for that. The seats are not fitting. You would need to have a dedicated big team 
big development effort, hundreds of millions of dollars, dedicated to just create a variant of this car that is actually human drivable in a commercial sense, not just a you can't just put a steering wheel on it. You need to optimize the whole car then for being driven by humans. Otherwise, it will be a flop because people drive like, dude, this is like weird. It doesn't drive really. It's like it has bad acceleration. All, all these issues that come up once it's not a robo taxi. And I think that's what Farzad got a little wrong. You can't just take a robo taxi that's optimized from scratch for being a robo taxi for passive being driven into an active driver's car because you need to revamp the entire car. Otherwise, it's a commercial disaster. You might be able to sell 100,000 of them, maybe to Tesla fans, maybe 50,000. But that's it. If you want to have commercial success, it needs to be a real car. And it's not a real car for human drivers. It's a real car. It's a robot taxi. So non-trivial. So I started thinking about it and analyzed it. And I will present my results now to you in this video. So number one, number one, what does Tesla actually say about his theory? Well. There's actually a commentary by Robin Denholm, and that's where Fazad celebrated a lot that happened the week around earnings, before earnings, end of October, not long ago. And what Robin Denholm, she's the chairwoman, the boss kind of, or the chairwoman, let's call it the chairwoman of the board of directors of Tesla, a very important person. And what she said is, if we have to have a steering wheel, it can have a steering wheel and pedals, okay? So let me repeat this. She was asked, would you ever produce this thing with a steering wheel and pedals? And then Robin Denholm said on Bloomberg, if we have to have a steering wheel, it can have a steering wheel and pedals. That's what she said. And then Bradford Ferguson, also very important, great. Another great person to follow on Tesla said, Fazard was right. Not so fast. Bradford and Fazard, that does not mean Fazard was right. Let me explain. Why? So after this happened, after this happened, Elon did his little tour and he talked, you know, for four and a half hours on around Halloween, October 30th and 31st, he was on Joe Rogan, but he was also on the All In podcast. And I want to play you guys a little bit what Elon actually said. Uber cab is gorgeous. I told you I'd buy two of those if you put a steering wheel in them. And there is a big movement You're online. putting a steering wheel in People are begging for it. Why not? Why not let us buy a couple, uh, you know, uh, you know, just the first ones off the line and drive them? I mean, it's they look great. It's like the perfect well, model. You always had a vision for a Model 2, right? Like, isn't it like the perfect Model 2 in addition to being a, a cyber cab? Look, the reality is people may think they want to drive their car, but the reality is that they don't. Um, uh, uh, how many times have you been, say, in an Uber or Lyft, and, and you said, you know what, I wish I could take over from the driver, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I wish I could get off my phone and, and take over from the Uber driver and, uh, and, and drive to my destination? How many times have you thought, to your, thought that to yourself? No, I, it's quite the opposite. Zero, I mean, I have... zero times, okay. <laughs> <laughs> A cyber cab. Okay, so, so basically this happened after all this stuff, after Robin said it. So it is crystal clear here. What Elon is saying, he's saying no. And his argument for it, by the way, his argument is not that he doesn't want it. He said it makes no sense for Elon FSD and full self-driving has been solved. He sees the data. He sees how these things behave. He sees how you use your model Y, 3, S, whatever it is. And he sees, okay, we basically solved this problem. Now we have remaining problems. Our AI teams are on it. And they are squeezing out the edge cases. And they're making it all happen. But in Elon's mind, one year in the future from last time he checked, which is like, you know, a few months ago, he said, dudes, this problem is completely solved and it will be perfect in latest one year, mid of 2026. This is perfectly solved. He already extrapolated this way back in, in the day, like a year ago, said we solved F FSD effectively. Okay. So then he thinks, well, it's not that we have too many resources. We need to be lean and efficient. What is the future? What is the first principle future of driving? Of course, no one wants to drive. And Elon is completely right about this again. You have to understand it. Elon is completely right about the fact no one wants to drive. Of course, you think you might want to drive, but that's just stupid. Like, no, 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 no. You just think you want to drive because you're used to driving. Once you realize this might be a hobby, you can be a race driver, but it's not something you want to do in your real life because you're busy. So I totally agree with Elon. It's like a no brainer. We have to learn as pioneers, think in first principles and get 
get to the no-brainer realization. And the most important thing for that is you have to decouple from the current reality and say, if this current reality wouldn't exist and I'm still a human and I had to decide, does it make any sense? And if you say, no, this, what's happening currently makes no sense if there would be an alternative. That's one of these cases. And Elon says, why should we waste time doing anything else if you have solved it? We should go all in, no pun intended, on the All In podcast. We should go all in and make autonomy happen now. And I don't want any distractions. Okay, so if Elon says there will never be a steering wheel in this thing, and they're already ramping up mass production, what are the odds that there's a steering wheel in? I think it's at this point clear that Fazard was wrong. Okay, but now comes my twist. How do you square the circle that the chairwoman says, if you have to put a steering wheel in, we will. And Elon says, we will not put a steering wheel in. That's why you watch my channel. Here comes the resolution. And my confidence of being right is roughly 95%. So it's very high. Okay, I give you the long story short. Cybercab will be prepared for having a steering wheel and pedals. Okay, it will have the option for a steering wheel and pedals. But it will not be redesigned to be a driver's car. And it will not be designed to be sold as a driver's car to consumers. That squares the circle. So it will have a steering wheel and pedals. They will already, they have already prepared this. They already have versions with a steering wheel and pedals in there. And every cyber cab will be prepared to easily have a steering wheel and pedals, but nothing else. It will be a crappy human driver car. No one wants to drive this car. It will behave badly and they will put zero optimization, zero management time into making this car in any way appealing for a driver. And the only reason they're gonna do that is regulatory reasons. And that is the only hedge Tesla is doing. It's a steel by wire system. By the way, it's very easy to put a steering wheel in if you won't, don't want to optimize the car for it. And the reason is there is actually a 2,500 robo taxi limit. Everyone talks about this. No one knows the facts. So I give you the facts so we actually understand what is everyone talking about with this 2,500 limit, right? What is that limit? So here is the exact explanation what that limit is. Okay. I make this bigger so you see it better. So here is the exact description of the limit. The 2,500 robotaxi limit is a federal cap and a US NHTSA exemption rules. It allows each manufacturer to deploy up to 2,500 vehicles per year that do not meet certain federal motor vehicle safety standards, including a steering wheel or paddles because under NHTSA, the National Highway, whatever administration, the, the guys who deal with the cars in the government, they say, dude, you cannot just have a car in the United States with no safety. And what is a safety problem? Well, if you can't freaking steer or brake, that's a big safety problem. And so NHTSA says you can have these huge safety problems for up to 2,500 cars. Why do they have this provision for research and development reasons? They say like, well, we don't want to be nasty. So you can have up to two and a half thousand cars per year that are extremely unsafe and crazy to allow manufacturers to have the experimental stuff going on. But for it cannot be more than that because it, that should be a joke and an experiment, right? Now, of course, robo taxis are now a new situation because they're not a joke and not an experiment. They don't need these safety things because they're perfect. But no one knows that and NHTSA doesn't understand it yet. And even if they do, they cannot react that fast. So this is an existing limit. So it's not a limit on robo taxis. It's a limit on cars that do not meet the safety requirements in the United States. And that includes cars without a steering wheel and pedals. And that therefore includes all raw, pure cyber cab versions. And the one way to avoid this entire thing is put mirrors on it, on the side, put pedals in it, brake, in gas or whatever it's called in EVs, an acceleration paddle and put, of course, a steering wheel in it. And if you do that, you can have millions of these. And that is exactly why Tesla hedges the launch with steering wheel and pedals, but not for you, just for NHTSA. Congress also discussed raising the limit to as high as 100,000 units, but it hasn't passed. But 100,000 units, are you kidding me? Tesla is not going to be happy with 100,000 units per year. It needs millions of units per year. So no matter what, that is the only, the only regulation in the United States that is a real problem for Tesla. And you can avoid that regulation by putting a steering wheel and pedals into the cyber cap. And here you have it squaring the circle why Faza can be right on the steering wheel, but wrong on the substance. Sorry, Faza. It was great to have the discussion. It's great that you initiated it, but now we resolved it.
So here's my bet. Yes, we will have a steering wheel. It is being prepared at scale, but no, it is not a new version of the Cybercab and it's not designed for driving. My bet is also we will have actually up the bet. This is old. 40,000 Cybercabs in 2027, 2026 next year. My bet is that Tesla will actually deploy 40,000 Cybercabs in the second half, mostly in Q4. I think that's a reasonable number. Not too aggressive, by the way, if Elon is even remotely right that Q2 is launch date. I think Q3 will be the launch quarter and then we scale up to 40,000. And here's the point. If I'm right, a lot of Tesla bulls, super bulls, by the way, think I'm underestimating this, but I don't think so. We should be a little conservative here. If Tesla launches 40,000 cyber caps, the stock goes to 2,000 next year. That's my next stock price prediction. I have a whole separate video on this. Check it out on my channel. We will talk more about that. If you're interested in being invested in the stock that goes from 480 to 2000 within 12 months, it is not my conventional fair value model where I'm just modeling out how much value is actually in Tesla. This is a stock price prediction, which normally I don't do. I just tell you how much worth a stock is, not the stock price. It's a different thing. But here I'm pretty sure. So that's it for today. Now you know my theory, cyber cap. We'll have a steering wheel. Fazad will be right on this. Fazad will be wrong on the reasons. And he will be wrong on the fact that this is actually something not designed for consumers and not for you to touch the steering wheel, but just for Nitsa to look at it and not. I hope that was interesting. Follow me on this channel so you don't miss out because a lot of interesting things are going to happen this year on this channel. Not just Tesla, but also a lot of Tesla. Go to pioneerlands.net where we discuss the future of AGI how we understand these AGI stocks and how we build a great community of pioneers who is prepared to survive and to thrive in the age of AGI. Take care and see you next time.